All right, everyone, millions now watching, so we can get started with this. Won't keep you all too terribly long. I know it's a Sunday night, and you know maybe you got things to do, and also we have to get ready for our uh, 10 o'clock newscast coming up here in just a minute. So let's talk uh, what's going to happen tomorrow. It's busy, not only because of the eclipse, but also because we got a chance of severe weather uh, tomorrow evening and into tomorrow night as well. Uh, so let's uh, get right to it and kind of talk about what's going to happen for um not only the eclipse, but for that severe weather threat. So picture and picture up for you. First of all, we're going to talk about cloud cover, obviously, for the eclipse. And what I've done here is I've made a map for uh, best chances for what I'm going to call optimal viewing. And what I mean by that is, is maybe not necessarily 100% blue sky overhead and you know where you can completely see the sunshine, but at least anywhere from what we'll say nothing but sunshine to mostly sunny skies. That would be what I would call optimal uh, viewing conditions for the eclipse. And you can see kind of easy color scale to find there. Red, not so good. Yellow, somewhere in between. And then the green uh, is a decent forecast. Now you see a whole lot of red there from central Texas down into the hill country, including Austin and into San Antonio. But you do see some yellow to green shades showing up here in North Texas. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Does look like some low level clouds are gonna be moving in as we head through the day tomorrow, mainly across Southern areas of North Texas. So the farther South you go, I think the worse your chances are for you know having really optimal viewing conditions. Now the farther northeast you go, the better your odd, odds are for a chance, at least a better chance, at having uh, what, would, what I'm going to call those optimal viewing conditions. Now is that absolutely 100% guarantee? Unfortunately I can't go that far because there will be some clouds around even in those areas, but at least your chances are better um, in that part of North Texas compared to the southern portion of North Texas. Now, DFW, probably going to be somewhere in between, at least most of DFW. I think there's a good chance that clouds being around, especially kind of the mid to high level clouds. But we'll also be watching whether or not there's any low level cloud cover around. And, and the window for that may be really close for who's going to have, you know, just the high clouds and who's going to have low level clouds. I mean, could it be like, you know, somewhere like Red Oak or Waxahachie is, is cloudy, but you know, maybe North Dallas is just some high clouds. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the window could be, or at least the um, kind of the range could be extremely small. So that's what we're watching uh, as we head through the day tomorrow. And I wish it was just a slam dunk forecast and that it was a day like today and we were going to have sunshine and everything was going to be totally fine. But I mean, we've been talking about this for literally weeks now, how there's a chance of having not only rain, uh, but cloud cover around for the eclipse. Now, the good news is I don't have rain around. Uh, for the eclipse, um, but I do have rain tomorrow evening and into tomorrow night. We'll touch more on that coming up in, in just a minute. So as far as what to expect for kind of the cloud cover situation, I still think there's a really low chance of having just completely clear skies. Maybe not 0%, but a very low chance at having just sunshine and no, and no clouds at all. Now, I think there's a very good chance, and we've been talking about this, that we're going to have those mid to high level clouds out there. Now, the good thing with those is that if those high clouds are thinner, we can still see the sun through those, and you'll still be able to watch the eclipse happen through those high clouds. Now, if those high clouds are a little thicker, that would obstruct viewing, but there's a chance at least that we could see those thinner high clouds out there around that time. Remember, at least for most of North Texas totality, or that you know, really the time everybody cares about is about 140 to 144, but the whole eclipse, including the partial eclipse, is like from 1220 to a little after three o'clock. So we're mainly focused on that one to two o'clock window, if not just that four minute window from 140 uh, to 144. But what we'll also be watching is as we talked about those low clouds, best chance for those south of DFW, lower chance of having those low clouds around the farther northeast you go in that uh, kind of path of totality there uh, during the day tomorrow. But there's still a chance uh, of some low clouds. But here's the other thing. Even if you have those low clouds around, there's also a chance of some breaks in those clouds. And when I show you our time cast coming up here in a second, it shows breaks in the clouds between about one to two o'clock. Now, 
basically what that's going to boil down to is you just getting lucky. I mean, if you're, if you're not traveling anywhere, if you're just staying at home or you're at work and you just want to go outside and check things out, basically the breaks in the clouds is just going to come down to dumb luck because it's impossible to predict exactly where, you know, the exact breaks in those clouds are going to be up until the, you know, basically the last second until you're looking at satellite or really you're looking up overhead because it's not like we can really forecast that all of a sudden there's going to be a hole over Greenville or a hole over Fort Worth or something like that. That we're just not that good at predicting cloud cover and the type of clouds that are going to be out there. It's going to be really hard for that for that to happen. But with those breaks in the clouds, obviously you would have better viewing, um, but that's going to be pretty hard to predict. So I think kind of the best case scenario for most everybody right now is the low clouds hold off and we just have some thin high clouds around for most of you. That's what I hope happens tomorrow. Alternative best case scenario, we have high clouds around, some low clouds are around, but we get some breaks in those clouds if you're you know, in the area that has more of the low level cloud cover. Worst case scenario is those low level clouds are a lot thicker than, ever, than, than we're thinking at the moment. And most of North Texas is just kind of overcast throughout the day tomorrow. I don't think that's what's gonna happen, but that's kind of the worst case scenario uh, for the area. I'm hoping that those two kind of best case scenarios, I think are the, I mean, best case, obviously the best case scenario would be nothing but sunshine, but there's an extremely low chance of that happening. So I think kind of the most reasonable best case scenarios are we just have some high clouds around, they're mostly thin, or we also have high clouds and then a little bit of low level cloud cover, but those kind of break apart uh, as we head through the day tomorrow. Remember, as I said, no rain in the forecast for eclipse time, but showers and storms will be moving in later in the day. So I wanna quickly talk about that. Um, and then I'm gonna let y'all, because we do need to talk about severe weather threat tomorrow and into tomorrow night. And then I'm gonna let y'all get on with your evening. So here's midnight tonight. Watch how these clouds move in as we head to our tomorrow morning. And I popped on the uh, eclipse lines or the, between those two lines there, is the area that we'll see what we call totality or the total solar eclipse. The center line there is the area that we'll see the, the longest duration of the eclipse. So it encompasses most of, I mean, you've seen this hopefully plenty of times by now, but it encompasses most of DFW, all of Southern North Texas into Central Texas and all of Eastern and Northeastern North Texas. Okay, so there's 7 a.m. Watch how these low level clouds though and, and these clouds just kind of build during the morning hours. But as we head toward that one to two o'clock time frame, they kind of start to dissipate a little bit. And then one to two o'clock, there's definitely clouds out there, but there's some breaks in those clouds. So that's what we're hoping for tomorrow afternoon is that, you know, there are going to be clouds around, but we get enough breaks in them or the, the thin high clouds that are out there are transparent enough that we able to see the eclipse a little bit better. That's what we're hoping for. But as you can also see, this is two o'clock, no rain anywhere close to anybody in the path of uh, totality there. But that will change as we head through the day tomorrow. Watch how these storms kind of move up from the south tomorrow evening and into tomorrow night. For DFW, probably won't see storm chances until after five o'clock, probably more like seven to eight to nine to 10 o'clock tomorrow evening uh, is DFW storm chances. And they're gonna be moving up from the south along 35, and to the east during that time frame, good chance of, of rain. Uh, but then we're also watching, look at, there's kind of two, two rounds of storms. The next of which is this one in northwestern North Texas. Look at that activity up by Archer City, Wichita Falls. That activity will start to spread kind of east and southeast as we head through the overnight hours. And it will also have a severe weather threat uh, with it during that time frame. Maybe a bit of a lull, Tuesday morning, but then here we go again, more rounds of rain and storms during the day on Tuesday and into Tuesday night. May not rain constantly during that time, uh, but there will be rain around. So here's kind of the official risk for severe weather tomorrow, um, but I'm gonna show you a little bit more kind of what I'm gonna call focused risk. What's up? You can talk. Oh, I just didn't know how much longer Give me like five minutes. Okay. The control room needs to do something, people, so I'm being told that I need to hurry it up here. Okay. Uh, so here's the official risk for tomorrow. DFW to the west and northwest under a three on a scale of five. Everybody else is under a scale of uh, under a two. I do believe chain, this, this, 
this map will be, we'll get another update to this tomorrow morning. I do believe there will be adjustments to this map, but that's why I'm gonna kind of break it down for you a little bit uh, differently. Here's where I think the severe weather threat is between about three to 10 o'clock. It's along 35 and to the east. My main concern, some large to maybe very large hail up to golf ball size and some strong wind gusts possible. And then unfortunately with this event, the tornado threat does not look to be zero. It's, on, it's lower than I'm concerned with the wind and hail threat, but it's definitely not zero either. And certainly some isolated tornadoes are possible with that activity tomorrow evening and into tomorrow night too. So if you're going to bed tomorrow night, it's also a situation where you need to stay weather aware uh, while you're sleeping and have a way to get weather warnings uh, while you're sleeping. Then tomorrow between 10 o'clock to seven in the morning, that next round kind of moves in from the Northwest, same threats, hail, wind, tornado threat may be a little bit lower than that first round tomorrow evening, than, than the second round, but it's not zero either. So we'll be watching that closely um, tomorrow night and into early Tuesday morning. Then as of right now, all of North Texas under a two on a scale of five for Tuesday during the day. And when it's all said and done, we could end up with anywhere from around one to two, one to, or excuse me, one to three inches of rain across the area with some higher totals east and some uh, lower totals uh, back to the west there. While I'm wrapping up here, I'll, I'll throw back up this eclipse map for you. And uh, we'll kind of end on this before, like I said, the control room needs to do a few things here because we're, we're almost 30 minutes away from our 10 o'clock news. So yeah. Here's what I think tomorrow, one last recap for you. The farther south you are, I think unfortunately, the better your chances, or unfortunately, the worst chances, that's kind of a weird way to say that. The worst conditions, we'll say that, for viewing the clips. Um, a very low chance of optimal viewing conditions, the farther south you are in North Texas. Now, the farther north, northeast you are, the better chance for optimal viewing conditions. May not be perfect, but at least a better chance, or at least, um, better conditions than what I'm expecting to the, to the so, uh, southern portion of uh, North Texas. So that's what we're dealing with tomorrow. Um, tomorrow morning, daybreak, you know, our daybreak newscast, Greg Fields will have the latest. We'll know more tomorrow morning as well because we'll actually kind of have some of that cloud cover out there by tomorrow morning. So 6 a.m., it starts at 5 a.m. to daybreak runs from 5 to 7 o'clock in the morning, but that's two hours there. Tune in at any point during that time. If you want to, you know, wake up at 6, 6.30 and watch, of course, you can absolutely do that. Uh, but tune in anytime between five and seven and Greg Fields will have updates on that. And of course, we'll have live updates throughout the eclipse uh, from noon to two, I believe, on uh, WFA Plus. We got people out at the Perot tomorrow and people all over North Texas to keep you informed. All right, I gotta let y'all go. And I hope you guys have a great evening, a great day tomorrow. And fingers crossed that uh, maybe the forecast is completely opposite of everything I'm saying and we just have sunny skies tomorrow and everybody can see the eclipse. We'll see. Have a good one.